Odelia Cusance lives in a halfway house and arrived at court with family. Can somebody call my sister out here? That's what we're asking. Her sister, Nerissa, still in a federal institution, still in handcuffs. They embraced outside of the Yorkton courthouse Tuesday morning, then smudged, nervous but hopeful that the judge will grant them a conditional release into the community. So my prayers are today for our lawyers and for me, Nerissa, and that I pray that the judge has a good open heart for us today. The two sisters were convicted in the death of 70-year-old Anthony Joseph Dolph in 1994. He was stabbed 17 times, but they say they're innocent. This bail hearing was to determine if the women can go home, while a federal review determines whether they were wrongfully convicted. But we're all willing to help my aunties and stick by their sides and, you know, like... Advocates and family members say a cousin confessed to the crime. I didn't think this was going to come like this, like where someone else was going to confess about doing what they did, do what they did wrong, and my aunties were the ones that, that took the rap for everything. Nicole Porter led a petition that garnered about 57,000 signatures in support of the women. We're hopeful that, uh, that it will mean that ultimately they can go home. It's, it's a gross uh, over incarceration by any standard and so we're hoping that at the end of the day they can finally be with their families. Crown Prosecutor Kelly Kipe cross-examined the sisters on Tuesday. She picked apart their criminal history, parole violations and questioned whether communities would be safe if the sisters were released. The court hearing will continue on Wednesday but the judge already warned the sisters they may have to wait at least a month for the final decision. At first I was like What's another month? What's another week? But then I think, you know what, me and my sister still shouldn't be sitting in another day. Dane Patterson, CBC News, Yorkton.